Well, hello everybody. It's good to speak to you on a Saturday morning. Uh, it's a little bit cloudy outside in Swansea, but it's okay. Uh, I was out this morning going for a walk and it was uh, just uh, fine. I had the most incredible video sent to me by one of the mums in the church. It's a little boy. They've moved into a new house. Uh, Dad's had to go away uh, to work. Uh, it's all a little bit different. But every night, this little boy who's either two or three, and I'm sorry I haven't got the age right, has written, sings a song. And I saw it last night. When everybody's gone and he has to face the dark, which is very unnerving for a little boy of that age. He sings this song he's made up himself. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. And then there's a bit I couldn't totally follow. If ever there was a way of summing up what faith is, it's to be like a little child and realise all that matters when you're in a new home, all that matters when there's so much change around you, all that matters when you have to face the night, is that Jesus loves me. There's a verse in the Bible that says this is how the just live. The just, justified, those who are right with God, this is how they live. They live by faith. Now there's a lot of misunderstanding about exactly what faith is. So if I take two examples of what faith isn't, and then maybe it's easier to remind ourselves of, of what living faith actually is. There was a lady on the first Sunday I started in Mount, brought a friend. When I say brought, she pretty much dragged her in and she said that this lady wanted to become a Christian. When I asked the lady, she made sure that she was out of eye shot, a shot and she shook her head. So I said, if I explain the gospel, will you be all right? And then you can leave if you want to. And the woman said, oh, please do that. So I explained the gospel and when I came to the word believe, a voice cried out from the back, believe, believe, believe. It's a way of telling yourself to do something. That's not faith. That's not faith. Now the woman was far godlier than I am, but that's not faith. One of my brothers uh, went through a phase when he was about four or maybe three, of having an imaginary friend. His imaginary friend's name was Sam. And Sam came on holiday with us. Sam lived in Gosainan. Sam, and this tells you something about his psychological condition, had three wives, all of whom had died by the age of five. He was quite an imaginary friend. But the advantage of Sam was whenever anything went wrong, it was always Sam's fault. And when one day, and I think my parents had got tired of this, the room not being tidy, Sam had made a mess. Somebody not eating their food, Sam had done it. One day when driving through Gosainen, uh, a voice came from the back of the car, that's where Sam lives. My dad stopped the car, reversed back and said, where? Sam was nowhere to be found and was never mentioned again. When Sam was needed... Sam was nowhere. A lot of people believe faith is that. But actually what the Bible teaches of faith is it's the exact opposite. What is faith? It is the good news of God. It is God's good news. It's not good news you find on earth. It's good news that comes down from heaven. What is that good news? It is the good news that God has done something powerfully to save and help you in every situation. He has sent Jesus Christ, his son, who is the object, the person that faith should be in. He has sent Jesus Christ to live for you, to die for you, to be raised from the dead for you, and has ascended into heaven for you, and is a solid anchor that you can hold on to when everything on this earth blows you about. It is God's good news. It is real good news. 
How does that work in practice? Well, it's a little surprising because the quote from Paul is taken from the book of Habakkuk. And Habakkuk's faith complains to God about his circumstances. He lists them, tells God it's really unfair. It doesn't seem to make sense what's going on. Why are these things happening at that time? Remarkably, the Lord responds. Even more remarkably, Habakkuk's faith is shown in him complaining a second time because he doesn't get it. You see, when you have faith in Jesus and you look at the world around you, you can speak to your Father in heaven and ask him what is going on. You can trust him. You can look to him. When your heart is shaken and pounded, as it says in the book of Habakkuk, there is a God in heaven who has provided a saviour for you. And your faith is not one of telling yourself to believe. It's not one of having a God who isn't there when you need him. It's being able to talk to God really about the things that everybody else looks to that have been shaken and have disappeared. That's what faith is. Faith is looking at the world around you and instead of putting your hope and trust in what seems real, is realising the change and decay in all around I see. It's realising that all that there is in this world is part of a cursed world and is passing. It isn't, there isn't, putting your trust in money is useless in the day of trouble. Putting your trust in friendship and in family is useless ultimately in the day of trouble. It's like my dad stopping the car and Sam being nowhere to be seen. So it is with all the things that people put their trust in in this world. When they need them, they will be nowhere to be seen. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And you can tell him about how you feel and he will not change. You can tell him about your failure and the world's failure and your fears and he will not change. And you can trust him. Habakkuk speaks to the Lord and then he hears the word of the Lord. And this is where his faith leads him. In a situation where everything around him is falling apart. Though the fig tree does not Bud, says Habakkuk, and there are no grapes on the vine. Though the olive crop fails, the fields produce no food. Though there is no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. In other words, when there is no food left and the shops are empty and nobody knows what's going to happen. This is what true faith does. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. You see, if you have living faith, you will have dying faith. Whatever comes your way, it's not your hold on Christ. Christ will have a hold on you and give you strength. A famous preacher, theologian, once said, God does not look for great faith. He just looks for small faith in a great saviour. It's not a case of you stirring yourself up so you'll believe or trying to imagine something that is true, not true. It's you trusting Christ and looking to him when you don't. That's enough faith. And he will hold you when you can't hold on to your senses or yourself. He will give you power when you are weak and powerless. He will show you love when you feel so unloved. He will never leave you nor, nor forsake you when you feel alone. That's living faith in the Bible. God's good news. It is simply believing, instead of what your heart tells you, that Jesus has died for your sins, that Jesus rules again, 
that Jesus is ascending into heaven and is ruling everything. And that Jesus will be present with you by his spirit if you look to him. I hope that each one of us here, members of Mount that I pray for by name every day, and other people that are watching, will stop trusting in things that disappear and that will simply trust Jesus Christ. Receive what he has done. Realise that is what living faith is. And then tell him about your fears. Tell him about your worries. Cast all your cares on him. And because you trust Jesus and live by faith, he will make you right and he will care for you. I love you. Looking forward to seeing you uh, or speaking. Sorry, I won't see you, but speaking to you tomorrow. We're probably going to put a playlist on YouTube so that uh, uh, you can sing songs in your home before the service and afterwards. May God keep you and bless you as you look to him.